Hello and welcome to the 2018 Meet the Candidates, a voter education program sponsored by the Chamber and Visitors Bureau here in Shakopee. Today we're joined by the school board candidate, Joe Aldrich. Joe, thanks for being here today. Why don't you start by introducing yourself and telling us why you chose to run for the local school board. Hi, again, my name is Joe Aldrich and I've lived in Shakopee since 2002 with my wife, Tara, and our two daughters. I am the CFO of an insurance brokerage in Eden Prairie and I have been controller slash CFO for companies since 1997. The reason I'm running is because, well, we've had some budget issues and it seems like the school board needs somebody with my accounting expertise on there to help explain budgeting issues and where we can cut and, and how we can read the financials in a better way so that when we don't have a surprise of being four and a half million dollars in the hole all at once because there was ways that we could have avoided that with somebody with my expertise on the school board. Great. The first question is going to be school board members serve their districts using a model known as board governance whereby the superintendent and district administration manage and the school board members govern. Please explain the importance of the two roles and how they differ from one another. Well th it's basically kind of like we have with the federal government and state governments. It's checks and balances. You have the superintendent in the school district doing one thing and they need somebody to make sure that they don't run rampant over everything else. You have a school board who wants to set guidelines and everything but they have to be implemented by somebody that's why you have the superintendent and the district. It's just if it works well, which it hasn't in the last few years, a few years ago, it, it's great but there's always a problem when you have the checks and balances that there's not always that check mm. when when both kind of are too much linked together and you need that separation just so that you have one person saying we are in charge of you so we have to manage you instead of having everybody be friendly because when everybody's friends issues mm. happen thank you the next question what ideas do you have for rebuilding the district's fund balance? What should the fund balance be and by when? Well, let's start at the end there. By when? When we can get there. Obviously, it's a lot easier to spend money than to save money, uh, unfortunately. I, I think we all have that issue at times. We, the, the, the reserve went down $10 million, give or take a million dollars. Um, it's, it never went negative. It's starting to be built up. When can we get there? As soon as possible. We need to not spend as much. Uh, one problem we have is the, the revenues uh, aren't always going to be there. The, uh, the tips that have gone on in the city are going to basically choke future revenue from increasing at a larger amount with, every, with, with the deferments in tax payments. So as long as we can manage the budget not spend as much as we have coming in, we should be able to build up that reserve. How quick? As fast as possible, but you can't do it so fast that you're choking current education. Mm -hmm. The next question. Shakopee's approved referendum spend is $724 per student. The state average is $1,297, and comparable districts are at $1,728. Is Shakopee spending enough per student, and what is your recommended per student allowance? This is a very interesting question because it comes down to how you spend your money. It's not necessarily how much you spend per student, it's how much you spend in the classroom per student, how much you spend on administration per student, how much you spend on buildings per student. Spending more money does not necessarily equal better grades, better test scores. Are we spending enough? Maybe, maybe not. I would think that I would love to be able to spend more if we could have you know specialized teachers in the uh, grade schools on for like math. I think that that would be a great thing to have. But can we afford it right now? I don't know. Are, is this is the city of Shakopee? Would they ever approve a levy with what has gone on over the past few years with the budget? I would think not. So we're going to have to do what, what what we have with and spend the money better, which is in the classroom. Unfortunately, in 2018, education spending seems to be about everything 
but spending on education. Mm -hmm. It's spending on education bureaucracy and everything like that. We need, you know, I'd love to be able to give teachers big raises. I think everybody would, but there's wish lists and there's reality, and the reality is right now our funding, especially from the city, is limited. Mm. But again, if if you could guarantee if we spend this much more money and our test scores and everything would go up, of course, who wouldn't be um, in favor of that? But I just don't necessarily see the correlation between the two. Mm. The next question. What is your view on the Academies of Shakopee model? How will you ensure its success? I am very hopeful, but I'm skeptical. I, I, I've, I think that the Academies can be a really good thing. The, the partnership between business and the schools are, are great. You have uh, companies coming in uh, from over throughout Shakopee coming in to talk to certain segments. You know, you have a bank come in to talk to uh, the business and entrepreneurship, and that's great. And, you, and somebody from the hospital go to health services, and somebody from a drama, like the Renaissance Festival, come in and speak with arts and communication. And those are great because you're, you're focusing that. The two problems I have is one, what if you're not in the academy you want to be because there's too many people in there already? It, it kind of destroys the whole premise behind it. Because everybody wants, if everybody wants to be in business entrepreneurship, there's not enough room. So you might get stuck with your second or your third. Right there, that's a bad thing. The other thing is when you're in ninth grade, you might want to be with your friends. You remember ninth grade, we all remember ninth grade. We want to kind of be with our friends. So let's just say half our friends want to go into health science, health services I should say, and they're like, come on, let's go on this together. And that kind of defeats the purpose. The one way that we can make it a, uh, a success, I think, if, if, it, if it stays, is we, uh, with the seventh and eighth graders and the ninth graders in the ninth grade academy, go out and convince them this matters for your future. Mm. Um, and I think if we can try to get that away from, it's okay not being with your friends, it can be more of a success. Unfortunately, when will we actually be able to see when it's a success? Two years after high school, 10 years after high school, 20 years after high school. If somebody's 34 years old and has a job in that field, that, that to me will be a success. We're not going to be able to know though for 20 years. Um, but I am hopeful, um, but I'm skeptical just for, for different reasons. So the follow-up to that would be, if you were a student at Shakopee High School today, instead of a school board member, which academy would you select and why? Here's the thing. In ninth grade, I, pro I might have done arts and communication because I, I wanted to be on the radio um, and, and really being in like, communication would help me in like interviews and stuff like that. Um, which would help right now. Uh, but going into 11th grade, my first, I, I wanted to be anything but an accountant because my brothers are accountants. Um, but that first week of 11th grade when I had my first accounting class, I'm like, yeah, I think I can do this. And it, it's gone on from there. So more than likely it would have been business and not entrepreneurship just because of where I am at now. But in ninth grade, it was completely different. So who knows? I, would, I, I guess I'd still go into business, but it's just, th your mind changes throughout high school, throughout college even. Even 10 years after college, you're like, do, is this what I want to do? And uh, so it can always change. Sure, thank you. The final question, what has the existing board done well? And what would you be excited to continue? Well, here's the thing. We all know that the board does great things. Um, there was, well, I was at the board meeting the other night and they had this program called Connect and, and Assess where instead of having a big open house for the students to come in, they got to meet individually, this was for kindergarten through fifth grade, meet individually with the parents instead of having the chaos of open house. Um, I remember when my daughters were at Red Oak uh, seven, eight years ago now, they you know, they'd, they'd meet the teacher, but if somebody was talking to the teacher, you wouldn't have that, that moment. Now they get, they get to go in, have a, I think it was a 30 minute conversation with the teacher, and just so that they could assess the student and everything and connect with the teacher. And really, I think that's the main thing, if you can get the, the parents and the kids and the teachers to connect together 
that will lead to hopefully greater success. Um, unfortunately, you can have 100 successes as a school board and one failure, and just like in business, nobody remembers the great things that a company does, they only remember the bad things. And the, the, how the school board has acted with the former superintendent and with the budget mess, I, I think that is why there's so much interest in this race and in the school board. My goal is if I, if I do get elected, that four years from now nobody will know my name because I'm not looking for any kind of legacy for myself. I just want the best. I just want the best for the school district, uh, monetarily wise, and education wise, so that we can have all our all our kids just be able to dream, dream big. And, uh, and with great, the teachers in Shakopee are great, the ones that I've uh, had with my daughters. Um, they're great. Um, my dad was a teacher, so, um, and my sisters are teachers, so I, I think teachers are great. I've never, I would have never been able to do it, but uh, we just need to support our teachers, support, our, support the parents, support the kids. And uh, I think we can, we can turn the budget around and, and Shakopee will be an ideal place for uh, people to want to move into to raise their kids. Great. Well, thank you again, Joe Aldrich, and good luck in the school board. Thank and thank you for watching the 2018 Meet the Candidates.